Hello, I am Dr. Cinema. I analyze and diagnose movies and explain them to you. I shouldn't have to explain this one. I mean, it's the Dark Tower movie. I mean, <clears throat> but for some background information, the Dark Tower is a series of books written by Stephen King spread out over several decades. It contains seven main novels. Well, it, well, in actuality, it actually contains nine novels, but one of them takes place before the first official book, and another was printed after the seventh book, but takes place in between books four and five. But for the sake of this, just say it's the seven books. It focuses on a gunslinger named Roland Deschamps, who is in search for the Dark Tower, which is the center of all creation and holds all the universes together. And he's trying to get there before the Man in Black, also known as Randall Flagg or Walter, Walter or Dim or any other name he has, gets there and takes down the tower for himself. Roland is accompanied by Jake Chambers as well as several other characters as he tries to go to the Dark Tower and save all creation and the, all the universes. It's a very unique book. It has, it has like mysticism, it has technology, adventure, fun, action. It's very unique, sometimes odd, but it's a very unique story that's, that really sticks out in your brain. And it will always be remembered for being one of the most unique stories out there. But we got a 2017 movie that's like basically any other action movie, so let's try to take a look at this piece of shit. Alright, so, but before we get into it again, I'm not going to tell you what happens in the books, because you might want to read those for themselves, and I highly encourage you to do. But the way that the last book ends helps explain the movie because the movie's supposed to be a continuation of the novels. It involves time travel a little bit. It's hard to explain, but it's not supposed to be a direct adaptation. But that's not going to help this piece of shit. The Lango Lears and Tommy Knockers miniseries movies are making fun of this movie. Let's get to it. So it starts off with Basically, any other adaptation of Stephen King novel, text. Oh, all right. So the text reads, talking about the Dark Tower, but and saying there's a prophecy that the boy will take down the Dark Tower. What? what where, where did this come from? The closest thing we got of a prophecy in the books was that a boy was destined to take down the Crimson King, who was the, the actual behind-the-scenes villain of the novel series. Where did this prophecy of a boy with a shine that's supposed to take down the tower itself? Oh, and by the way, since this is supposed to have Easter eggs and not to other Stephen King works, boys have to shine or psychic ability, so get used to that in this movie. But then we focus on a group of kids in a house sort of constricted area with some adults with some skin stitching stuff watching over them, and they take some of the kids and take them to... It's a Death Star. It's, it's, it's a goddamn Death Star. I mean, look, the, the novels had weird technology. I mean, the third book had a 80-foot-tall 80, 80 something, 1,000-year-old cyborg bear. I mean, that's, that's strange, but also unique and actually kind of original, especially for the time it was published. But for the movie, you, where did this Death Star machine come out? You just basically put kids... Use their shine abilities to try to take down the tower. I mean, what? It's a Death Star. I mean, why do movies need Death Stars? They work for Star Wars, but why? Why? Oh, my God. But then it appears that this is a vision that one of our main characters, Jake Chambers, is having back at home in New York in modern day. And so we learn through Jake that he's been having these visions about, like, about, like, the man in black, the gunslinger, and we learned that as he goes through his days, his drawings, his trouble at school, and with this therapist who is supposed to be a nod towards, again, the shiny movie again, and we get several other nods, especially to Christine and Cujo. Now, and then, like, and so Jake becomes, like, become, is, uh, 
sorry. So Jake comes home, his parents are there, and there are these couple people here that's supposed to be some sort of like a uh, mental institution of some sort where they're going to take Jake away and try to make shit for the weekend, they say, and try to get him like, try to get him over the fact that his th dad, who was a firefighter, died in like a firefighting incident. But then he sees that these people are like the skin people from his visions, so he runs away. And he comes across this house. But wait, wait. Let's back up a little bit. Because there's something here that really pissed me off. So before these people come, there he has like dream visions specifically about Roland and his father. It's like a final battle. Roland and his father exchange some kind words. Man, that comes up, makes Roland's dad stop breathing. And he had comments saying Roland has always been able to resist his magic, but not for any more, and that the tower will fall. And after that confrontation, we it fades to black, and a woman narrates, The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. Black screen. Narration. What the fuck? For those of you who don't know, the first book starts off with the sentence, the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. It's like one of the greatest sentences I have ever read, and it's a very popular sentence, a lot of meaning. It's, it's pretty much perfect. They could have used this chance to visually show that sentence of Randall Flagg running across the desert, looking back over his shoulder, Running across with the gunslinger following in the distance. But they do a black screen and narration? What the fuck? What the fuck? What? Ugh. Movies are supposed to be visual, Stephen King. Not everything has to be narrated, text does not have to be on the screen. Visual show. Oh my. But yeah. So yeah. Back to where we were supposed to be. Jay comes across this house that's haunted. It has another nod to something that's supposed to be from the books. But yeah, it's following so well. I'm surprised they didn't put it in there. And he comes across this like, gateway and a keypad where he enters numbers he's seen from his vision 1919. Which is basically never fuck you to the book because that's not what the number's supposed to mean at all. And then he goes into the gateway and he comes into Midworld, where he eventually meets up with Roland Deschain. And then we cut back to Man in Black, who has been following Jake and is trying to find a way to capture him and to use his shine to take down the Dark Tower. Because Jake has been a because he believes after seeing drawings that are in Jake's room that he could have the shine to take down the Dark Tower. Now, I want to take a pause here for a moment. To this movie's very little credit, the three main actors are actually not that bad. Idris Elba plays Roland Deschain, the gunslinger, and he actually does a pretty good job. I know some people have been making, like, I mean, complaining that, oh, he's black when he was in the books. I don't really care. He does a good job. So, I like him. And the, I don't know who plays Jake Chambers in the movie, but he does a pretty good job, too. I like him. I sort of sympathize with him. And I'm not usually a fan of child actors, and I really like him. Matthew McConaughey is the man in black. There are small moments which it works. I mean, a couple small moments which is a little bit intimidating. But for some reason, he has, he has that, all right, all right, all right, like, attitude with him. I'm like... I mean, that could have, that attitude could have worked in small moments, and he could have been intimidating all the other moments, but it's fine. I probably would have found someone to do it better, or, like, led him to do something better, but it's good enough, I suppose, and for this movie, I'll take it. Alright, so, so Roland and Jake, once they meet Midworld, they try to 
together go find a place where they can find another porter to open back into New York, and they find this little, like, village place where, again, one of the girls there knows the shine that Jake has and say that finding, like, his is very wanted by evil people, and so the man in black sends a bunch of skin crawlers, I think they're called, to the village to attack and take the boy, but Roland and Jake escape, and they go back to New York City. Now in New York, they somehow find where, like, the man in black has had these people take the kids to in order to get to the Death Star, because that's what I'm calling now, the frickin' Death Star. But the first along the way, they go back home, and they see that the man in black has killed Jake's stepfather and killed his mother as well, which caused him to break down and caused a little bit of conflict between Roland and Jake, where they ultimately slay the gunslinger's creed, which was famous in the book, but I guess they only put it in just to remind us that this is related to the book. Now, I want to take a pause again to say something about this. The changes they made in regards to Jake's parents are interesting. Not bad, but interesting. See, in the book, Jake's dad was an important person in like, the TV industry. Now, we can't even remember what his mom really did, but she was, really wasn't around. He was raised by a nanny, and they had a pretty great apartment, multiple floors. But for the movie, his dad was a firefighter who's dead, and his mother, regular mother, and he has a stepfather who, in his own jerkish way, is trying to do what he can. And... It does sort of make the kid a little bit more relatable and such, but do we really always need a child protagonist where one or two of the parents are dead? I mean, do we really need that? I mean, that's just mainstream. Why can't it be just like a little more like the book where at least the dad's the actual dad and he's alive and they're just trying to figure out what's going on with Jake? But I digress because there's just so much more to get frustrated this movie with. They could have shown instead of the black screen. Moving on. So. So they get, go to a gun store to get more ammo and stuff. Man in Black shows up, tries to kill Roland. He kidnaps Jake instead. Takes him to the place where he was taking them. Roland follows. And that this is where the big gunfight climax battle happens. Now. I want to, now, I want to say something. Again. The reason why this movie was delayed was because they wanted to pay more attention to the special effects. They wanted to touch up the CGI. Which is why this movie is so goddamn embarrassing. I mean, it's, for most of it, it's fine. Not really original, not interesting, not engaging, not exciting. It's just fine. It's underwhelming. Oh, and especially that one but saying it's so, I want to know what that process was like. They're like, all right, all right, we got Roland, we got the disposable henchmen, you're in the bus, and take them out. We're going to replace you with some crappy looking CGI characters. And I don't care how crappy the CGI character versions of you work, we're just going to work with our $60 million budget and just go with it. I mean, don't you think we should try uh, at least like putting some more blood, make it R-rated? Are you nuts? Sony wants to make a franchise out of this. So anyway, the crappy CGI bus battle thing, and then Roland gets back and he tries to get to Jake before he completely uses Jake's shine to take down Dark Tower. The Man in Black and Roland have a little like fight, gets a glass in his hand, blood a little bit, but then. Roland manages to shoot Man in Black in the heart and in the head. No blood. But what? What? Did you spend your blood money on the blood coming from Roland's hand or what? But he saves Drake. They get out. The Death Star is destroyed. Dark Tower is safe for now. They're in New York. Roland says, tells Jake they want him to come with and save Dark Tower. They go into a portal. And that's also where the movie ends. And that's the Dark Tower movie. Jesus fucking Christ, that was awful. What? What happened? Like I said, to this movie's very little credit. I like Roland. I like Jake. 
Matthew McConaughey was passable. There are even a couple of scenic shots that I, I do kind of like. The score is, works fine, but the choices, like the Death Star machine, the prophecy of a boy meant to like destroy something, uh, the whole crappy CGI, I mean, what the fuck happened? I mean, it's like every other movie we've seen. I mean, you kind of collect connect to the main character, sort of, but not really, because you know they're going to try and make more movies out of it. And you know the villain's not really dead, because it's the villain. I mean, I... Do you know what baffles me the most about this? Well, a couple things. One, the budget. 60 million, or like 66 million. It, you, you want to make this a franchise, Sony. Why are you... Using so such a little budget for a movie like that. I mean, do you know secretly going this movie is going to be bad, so you didn't really want to invest that much money? I mean, if you're going to make it that small of a budget, you could at least make it R-rated. But yeah, there's that. The movie's also really short, which is both a blessing and sort of like a curse. I mean, you can't really delve into like the mythology and the history of the books in an hour and a half. Why? And for some reason, Stephen King was involved in the process, likes the movie. I don't understand. I mean, I mean, what's wrong with you, Stephen King? You like the crappy version of the Dark Tower based on the novel series that's your magnum opus, but you hate the Stanley Kubrick version because they changed the ending. And so, in fact, he hated that Shining version so much, he went and made his own miniseries version of it. And it's just just exposition, exposition, cheap, scares, no thrills whatsoever. I mean, this movie, I mean, okay, to be completely honest, by the time the movie came out, I was only partly through the fourth book because I was reading it for the first time, but... Even I can tell this movie did not represent the novels. In fact, this crappy snapback of a Ouija board represents the Dark Tower series more accurately than this freaking movie does. I mean, why? I mean, a Death Star machine we've seen a million times, a shitty ass prophecy you've heard a million times. More focus on exposition and crappy fight scenes than doesn't actually visually store actually visually telling the story and making beautiful scenes. I mean characters that are fine, passable that but could have been great. And a story that limits what can be in instead of allowing it to do whatever it wants to bring viewers in for a unique experience. I mean This is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. If you haven't read the books, I could maybe understand why you think this is actually okay, but even then you should be able to tell the story is cliche, the action is crappy, the CGI needs work, even though they delayed it to work on the CGI. Everything, most of the things that could have gone with this movie happened. Now, I know there's talk of making sequels, but I hope to God does not happen. Or at the very least, they make major changes, get a different director, get different writers, and make it R-rated, make it longer, actually take stuff from the book and actually put it in the movie. Ah, this is so bad. This was so bad. Ah, but... But it comes out next month, and it looks promising, I guess. Like, comment, subscribe, and this is Dr. Cinema. See you next time.